to uh, Living Faith Fellowship. We are live with uh, Facebook Live and uh, church is a little bit different tonight. So uh, just uh, ask you to hang in there with us. We're uh, um, making some adjustments. Pastor John is uh, having to stay home because he was a bad boy. So he's, uh, he's having to stay home. But uh, not really. Anyway, so we're having some adjustments with this coronavirus thing still giving us challenges and and here and there and so i'm tim crowell i'm going to give the message tonight and trone is going to lead praise and worship and we'll do a few songs and uh and we'll give a message and we just want to encourage you to to uh um enter in just like if you were here live and uh, just want to encourage you with all those things that uh just let god move on your heart amen all right here we go. Go ahead.
of God and man, you are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise your great name, your great name. God, we just thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. Lord, you give us, you give us wisdom, you give us insight, you give us strength, you give us stability. Thank you, Father, for your word that never changes. Lord, we thank, thank you, Lord, that that you are God, you are King, you are above all these sicknesses, all these challenges, all these different things that we have to deal with. Lord, we thank you, Father, that you're above depression. You're above anxiety. You're above fear. Oh, we thank you that you are, you are the God of strength. You are the God that, that heals us. You are the God that gives us wisdom and insight. And Lord, we thank you for all those things. We thank you, Lord, for the word tonight. We thank you, Father, that the message go out and be strong and the anointing is there. And Father, we just thank you for all that you're doing in us and through us. And we thank you, Father, for those that are uh, watching tonight, Lord. Just um, that you can just anoint them and help them and encourage them. We thank you, Father, for all that you're doing. All that you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, it's crazy times. Crazy times. <laughs> um. I enjoy preaching to a packed house. It always helps, encourages us, and gives us motivation. So uh, if you can hear a few amens and a head nod, that always helps. Amen? <laughs> All right. Well, um, I guess in a sense, it's Wednesday night, so it's our Wednesday night Bible study, so we're encouraged that if you're watching by Facebook, I'm not going to try to pull it up on Facebook and get all those things figured out. And, I'm just not, uh, uh, I just don't want to get involved with that. So if, uh, if you need something or uh, I guess just communicate somehow, all right? So uh, the message tonight is, uh, you know, the, the thing that we hear, keep hearing is what's the new normal? What's the new normal? What's it going to be? And uh, so I, I just read a little article and a little devotional and and uh, I got this devotional off of uh, off my Bible or my phone, and it's uh, um, um, sorry, let me get back here. U version. I don't know if you guys have U version on your phone, but it's pretty neat. It gets the Bible and quite a few different translations and different things like that, and then it has a whole boatload of uh, devotions and different things like that to encourage you and help you and give you insight. And um, and um, just it's just pretty neat. It just works really well, and I and I enjoy using it. And uh, the devotions you can share with other people if you want to do it with other people. And, and I found that uh, if you go through and use the Bible part of it, um, if you make highlights and things like that, it will uh, save those, and you can look back and find those later. Could you turn that volume down just a hair? just ringing just a little bit up here 
So, uh, okay. Back up maybe a little bit. Maybe that'll help. All right. Well, we just, uh, so, um, so what is the new normal? So the title of my message is actually, is, um, what is the title of my message? Better than normal. There we go. Better than normal. So uh, we want to come out of this, out of this situation better than what we, than we went in. You know, it, it hit us kind of hard. Um, a lot of things happened. A lot of different things went on. And um, we uh, kind of got hit with, you know, here in Knuckles County, we, we went pretty good for quite a while without getting too many things going on. But right now we've got a little outbreak going. But, you know, God is bigger than that. God is, God is a healer and God's going to take care of those things. And uh, we just, we want to be, not be ignorant, not be, do silly stuff, but we want to be smart and do take the instructions that we get from, from those in charge and uh, try, to, try to do our distancing and our hand washing and our, and our disinfecting and, and uh, use the face covering when you need to, different things like that. I get kind of annoyed with those things, but I guess it's, it's part of what it takes to make, make things work. And so we just want to be, just want to, want to do that. So, uh, so what is normal? The big, the big question is, we're going to have a new normal. What is that new normal? The new normal is, is to a lot of people, it's a lot of different things. If you, if you watch the news very much right now, you kind of know that there's a lot of crazy things going on. You know, it's a political season. You know, we've, we're pretty sure that all these problems are going to go away about no, November 5th or 6th, something like that. You know, a few days after the election, stuff like that. It'll all, it'll all settle down and go away. But, but um, anyway, between now and then, we've got to just hang in there and do what we have to do. So what's the new normal? The normal, normal means... Conforming to a standard or a type, a regular pattern. Uh, the term normally usually refers to something that's typical or natural or something that most, most people do. And uh, um, we're creatures of habit. And I, and I know that for myself and I know my wife is too. That, that um, we are consistently like to do the same things over and over. When there's a big change, there's a kind of an upheaval and, and things happen and and that makes things kind of hard and challenging and stuff like that you know and and so we have to learn new things and it's it kind of gets kind of a uh, a different thing a different approach and we have to kind of work through those things but uh, the normal that I would like to see the new normal or, or a better normal would be that where are we in our Christian walk how are we how are we going to come out of this thing um, better than we went in. And um, so here's a, here's a scripture for you. We'll just start with this. Luke chapter uh, 17. Let's see if I find the right verse here. Let's we'll start with verse 26. 17 verse 26. And when the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in, a day, in Noah's day. In those days, the people enjoyed banquets and parties and weddings Right up to the time of Noah entered his boat, and the flood came and destroyed them all. In those days, the people enjoyed banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time of Noah. So there's, there's an interesting thing going on there. In the days of Noah, you know, it's going to be like that in the last days. So what kind of things are going on? People are just living their life. We're just out there living. We're just we're cranking it up. We're trying to do get the best we can. We're trying to get our retirement plan fixed up. So then when we can retire, we can just go get our big motor home and we can see the United States or go wherever or go just, just do the things we want to do. But my question is if, if and that's, that's the things that they were doing in the days of Noah. They, you know, Noah preached for 120 years and he tried to get people to repent. But who got on the ship or who got on the boat with him? Just his immediate family. Nobody else got on. Nobody else heard the voice of, of him crying out to those to repent and to get back and to get right with God. And I see that happening a lot today. The, the churches, church members are way down. Um, you know, we, we've got a lot of great churches in the United States. We've got a lot of great churches in the world. We've got great missionaries all over the world doing great things. You know, and there's, and there's, there's a great revival in other countries. But the, the, it seems like the revival in the United States is, I want to revive what I want and do the things that I want to do. So I don't have to. I don't have to submit to anybody. But um, God wants us to, you know. And if we if we look at that, if we examine that, we don't want to be that. We don't want to be those people that ignored 
what God is trying to do. I don't, I don't believe that God brought the coronavirus to us to, to teach us anything or it's not a judgment on the world. God is going to judge the world, but it's not here yet. God's judgment is not here. This is an outbreak. This is a worldly thing. It's, you know, we live in a world of sin. And, uh, and, and, and it's an outbreak of, of just of, of things that happen. But God is bigger than all those things. God didn't, it didn't catch God off guard. He not, didn't wake up one morning and say, uh-oh, now what do we do? We've got to fix this problem. God knew, God knew what was happening. And I really believe that God put a lot of things in place, you know, even months or years before all these things began to happen. You know, one thing that it's done for us at our church, Living Faith, and, and churches all across the United States and even around the world, is it's helped us to reach out in a different format, in a different, a different way, that we, can, that we can minister to people in a different, in a different format through Facebook, through YouTube, and uh, all kinds of different things like that. And it's really interesting because we've been trying to buy equipment to make all this stuff work better, and just the manufacturers are just backordered for even months on some of this stuff the things that we want to get, and we kind of piecemeal it together here and there. We were fortunate to get what we got, and, and we're working with it, and we're expecting some more stuff to try to make it even better. So, uh, so it's just, a, you know, and, and again, go back to the thing that God was, God knew these things were happening, and I think God began to prepare people to, to see how to do things different, and it's, and it's a stepping stone, a learning curve for us, trying to, to help us to get where we need to get. And so I just want to encourage you that um, your new normal, make it a better normal. Make it a better, better than what it was. Make your life better than what it was. You know, there's some ways to do that. Um, we want to, as followers of Christ, we want to, we want to live the best we can live. We want to do the things that we can know to do. So. Uh, um, you know, there's basically three things that God has called us to do. And uh, this season can be, can be a real challenge. It can be a real challenge for people because their finances are being adjusted. Uh, there's sickness. There's things like that. We can't, we can't visit like we were. We can't get out like we were. You can't see our you know, your elderly parents like you were. They can't get out like they, they were. So the season's hard. But... God has a plan. God, we can work through those things. You know, if we look, if we look to the world for answers, all we're going to see is stay home, stay sheltered, stay in your basement, don't go out, you know, um, store up toilet paper, you know, whatever, and uh, try to try to protect yourself that way. But um, you know, there's a scripture in Romans eight twenty eight, and it says, "And we can know this: we we can know that those who love God, all things will work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose." God has a plan for us. God has a purpose for us. If we have to stay true and, and, and hang in there. Um, you know, some of, the, some of the things that, you know, we might wonder, well, what are we supposed to be doing? Well, let me ask you a question. What did Jesus say when he got ready to ascend back into heaven? He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Maybe it's a time we need to step up our game and begin to preach the gospel more. Maybe we need to step out and, and start reaching people and begin to witness to them. How about witness to them with the truth? Of that God heals, that God God is a God of uh, prosperity. He wants us to prosper. You know, um, I don't know if, if if you have everything taken care of, you're more able to do what God wants you to do. But if you're struck, if you're strapped and struck down with with a whole load of bills and a whole load of loans and different things like that, you can't pay off and stuff like that. It's going to be hard for God to call you to go to a certain place or to give and donate to a certain place, and so put, put, begin to allow God to move and speak to your heart. He wants us to make disciples. He wants us to not only go into all the world and preach the gospel, but he wants us to make disciples. He just doesn't want converts. He wants disciples. So what are we doing to, to get ourselves equipped so that we, can, that we can have a better time? You know, one thing that, um, that I did is I, I, uh, I'm used to, I got this devotional off of... Uh, off my phone here, and uh, there's all kinds of devotionals on it. I would encourage you if you don't have a good devotional, if you don't, if you're not reading your, your Bible daily, I would really encourage you to get into that. I, I struggle with it. I challenge. I'm challenged with that to do that consistently. 
But um, it's, it's where the answers are. It's where the help is. That's where, that's where you can be encouraged. Um, this, this can be a real serious time of depression. It can be a real time of, of fear and anxiety. But we can change that. We can let God move in there and, and get in His Word and, and be structured with what His, what his, um, his plan is. You know, God didn't put the whole strain and stress of the world on your shoulders. He said He'll take all that. He just wants you to do your part. God wants you to do your part. And if you do your part, He'll help you and He'll work through you. Amen? So, what are the things that God wants you to do? Number one thing He wants you to do is He wants you to love, you. He wants you to love Him with all your heart. In Matthew twenty two thirty seven, 37, um, it says, you know, seek first, or that's, that's a different scripture, but, but um, put God first in your life. Seek Him with all your heart. Put, and, and to do that, that means you have to get other things out of the way. Maybe there's, maybe there's things that are hindering your, your, your new normal. Your new normal is a better walk with God. A better normal would be fellowship with Him on a daily basis, knowing Him personally, able to walk with Him, and, and understand what He wants for you. All right? So, uh, to love God with all your heart, how are you going to do that? Well, you're going to probably have to get some things out of the way. There, maybe there's too many things going on in your life. Maybe there's too, many, uh, too much work going on. Maybe we need to trust Him more and believe in Him. And, uh, and let, him, let Him guide you in those things. Uh, next thing He wants you to do... Um, I'm going to... Look this up here real quick. All right. Uh, Matthew 22, verse 37 says, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. The second one... The second one is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. So if you want to fulfill God's law, God's plan, God's purpose in your life, do these two commandments. And if, and if you really study that out and think about that and apply that to your life, it'll consume you. It'll consume everything that you're doing. Your job will be focused on what can I do to, to help do what God wants me to do. Excuse me. Help me do what God wants me to do. What can, what can my... How can my job help my neighbor? How can, I, how can I do things that can help my neighbor and love my neighbor as myself? All right? Um, then in Matthew twenty-eight nineteen it says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel, making disciples of all the nations, of all people. So, you know, I already mentioned that, but we need to go and do what God wants us to do. We need to um, get out there and, and, and be that light, help, help others see that light. All right. So the question is this. How can you encourage someone today with God's word? How can you do that? How can you be a part of what God wants you to be a part of? All right. So if we let God move on our heart and uh, be led by those things, we can uh, um, continue, to, continue to be led by him. He can encourage others and help them do what they need to be doing. All right. Okay, so new normal for us. What's a new mo normal for us? Maybe it's it's helping us get back to where we should be, um, get back into the relationship that we should be uh, trusting God more in every area of our life. Is, uh, the question is this: Is He your healer tonight? Is He your is He your helper? Is He the one that, that um, provides for you? Does He have your finances? Are you are you trusting Him in every area? Is he your peace? Is he your security? Amen. All right. So, uh, all right. <laughs> all right. 
Well, so in the area of money, how about this? How about a new, a new normal or a better normal? How we handle our money, how we do things. Um, in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 10, it says that, um, well, that money, money, finances doesn't satisfy we need to know that God is our source and, and that he's our provider. You know, uh, Solomon talked about that. Solomon was the richest man in the world. And when he wrote Ecclesiastes, he said, there's, there's nothing. It's just all vain. And then there's another scripture in Proverbs 13, 11, says that when wealth is gained quickly, it dwindles quickly. So we have to learn how to handle it and how to, how to manage it. So uh, in Matthew 6, 19, Jesus teaches about money and warns us against about uh, accumulating worldly treasures. You know, treasures that uh, on this earth are going to rot and go away. And um, they're not going to last, but he says to um, store up those things in heaven so that when you get there, they're there. And those are the, the real things. All right. So a new, here's a list of new normals that we should be looking at. Normal, fo- normal focuses on accumulating, while better than normal gives to others. Normal allows money to lead, while better than normal seeks to be led by God. Normal keeps 100% of our income, while better than normal trusts God. Trust God with the 90%, or your tie, 10%. And then you hang on to the rest and then let God deal with that and help you, help you spend that better and take care of that part. Normal, normal doesn't think ahead. Well, better than normal lives, lives a life with a plan. You know, it's, it's a great thing to have a retirement plan. It's a great thing to have things set up to plan ahead, you know, and uh, to do things the way we're supposed to do them. Normal is enslaved to debt. This is a big one. We get ourselves all wrapped up in money and debt, and then we can't, hand, we can't get ourselves out of it. Better than normal, save to pay in full. You know, Dave Ramsey has put a plug in for Dave tonight that, um, you know, if we would have been doing, we, I'll say myself, involved in that too, plan out and do the things like Dave said, you know, we'd probably this, this uh, coronavirus thing probably wouldn't have affected us near as much as, as it could. But if you, if, if you planned it out, and had your budget planned out, and had your uh, your uh, your everything in, in order. I'm trying to think of the emergency fund. There we go. If you had your emergency fund put in place, like like Dave talks about a lot, you could uh, have those things ready to go, and 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 just kind of cruise right on through the through these little challenges. All right. Normal thinks of today, while better than normal invests for the future. Money isn't a bad thing by itself, but when we allow it to be our God, it can wreak havoc in our lives. The money we earn should be something we use and not something that uses us or controls us. All right? In Proverbs 3, 9, it says this, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first, first fruits of all thine increase. Proverbs 22, 7, The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. See, so many people get stressed because they've over budgeted or over, they've over planned or they didn't plan good enough, and then they're under the under the weight and the burden of a debt and the payments. And uh, and um, I can remember clear back in high school, I had a had a uh, teacher that said you can never borrow yourself out of debt. And it, and for some reason, that just stuck in my head. I just always remembered that. Okay, and then in Matthew 6, verse 19 through 24, it says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust do, scor- where moth and rust do corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up your tre- yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, corrupt, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We can, we can just... Uh, Sit and meditate on that for a little bit. Where your heart, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. What are the things that you think about? What are the things that you do and participate in? 
That's where your heart is. That's where your treasure is. And I would say maybe a new normal would be check those things out and see where you're at and see what, what's going on with that and see if, see if you are where you should be. Maybe this is a time to read. You know, if you're locked up in your house for a week or two or, you know, some people I know couldn't go out like Nebraska here in Superior. You know, we were able to uh, keep going all the time. Some people got laid off in different places and things like that and had to stay home and uh, and work from home. I got family members that are working from home, and uh, they kind of like it somewhat. But um, we use this time as a as a time to refocus and relook and and to think things through and see what what can the normal what can the better than normal be in the future for us. So where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We have to look onward. And look, look for eternity. What, what are the things? That we, how can you affect eternity today? How can you affect eternity today? Be, a, be better than what you are today, tomorrow, and, and, and affect your eternity. Affect someone else's eternity. You know, we, we float along in our life so wrapped up in who we are and what we're doing that we forget about those that are around us. So if we love God with all our heart, and then the second commandment is love your neighbor as yourself, are we loving them? Are we loving them into heaven? Are we offending them and, and doing things that are mean or, or deceitful or not caring? So we need to be, be that person that can love, love your neighbor as yourself, okay? All right. Let's look at 1 Timothy 6.10. It says this, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and proceed pierce themselves through with many sorrows. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Money is not evil. Money is an inanimate object. It can be used for good and, and for bad. But the love of money can consume us and, and, and take us down and hold us and keep us where we don't want to be. Where we don't want to be. All right? Okay. Another area that we want to be better at a new normal, to be, make a better normal. The better normal is our, in the area of work. Work is a good thing. God has given it for all of us. What happened in the Garden of Eden? God said, go, you know, made Adam and Eve, and he said, go take care of the garden. He said, work, you're going to have to work. And then after the fall, God, man had to work by the sweat of his brow, right? So, uh, so work's not a bad thing, but work can consume us if we're not careful. Just like money can consume us and... Uh, keep us from doing everything that God wants us to do and uh, get us all wrapped up in it. Work can be the same way. I can, I can vouch for that. Somebody, uh, we'll go down here and go through the list here. Our work, while our work is a gift from God, sometimes we can develop an unhealthy relationship with it, just like with money. For example, some people overwork themselves to the point of burnout, which may lead to serious health issues. Other times we struggle with underworking whether by chores or, or due to circumstances out of, out of our control. Working hard and resting well are both incredible value, incredibly valuable. But ultimately, we must find a better than normal viewpoint and work ethic when it comes to how much we produce. Okay. So what, what is a normal? Normal work thing is, finds its identity in a job. Well, better than normal knows who we are in Christ. Normal chooses workaholic, work workaholic, like a workaholic. Well, better than normal chooses uh, when to say no. So, uh, um, a workaholic, who would that be? I don't know anybody like that. Okay. Anyway, how can that ever be a problem? All right. I've, all, I've often said if I, you know, if I didn't have to eat, and I didn't have to sleep. Just look how much more I could get done. But uh, that's not always a good thing. All right. Okay. Normal looks for normal for some people. Normal looks for ways to avoid difficult work while while better than normal perseveres and gets gets the job done. Normal sees what we do while better than normal sees purpose in how we work. All right. Work, work can be a blessing, but work can be a curse. Don't let the blessing become a curse. 
So uh, let God work through you and help you, all right? Um, here's a scripture for you in Colossians 3, verse 23. It says this, if In all the work you are doing, work the best you can. Work as if you were doing it for the Lord and not for people. Amen? So I use that, I use that uh, phrase a lot in my head when I'm working for someone or, or doing a job. I've got to persevere and do a good job and try to make it work out and get it done. All right? All right. Okay, here's that scripture. Genesis 2.15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Proverbs 13.4 says this. The soul of the sluggard desires and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Then one more here. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. It said, Let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. That's a famous scripture for this church. Amen. All right. Okay. So how, how can we have a better than normal in the area of relationships? There'd be another topic or another, another thought here is, is relationships are a part of all of our lives. Some of them are healthy while others aren't. At times we may feel closer to people than, than we're not related to and feel distant from those in our own families. How can we make it better? How can we get better relationships, better than normal? All right. We have to, let's go back to that scripture that, uh, that love God with all your heart and then love your neighbor as yourself. Love your family members yourself too. Help them and encourage them. Try not to be short with people. Build them up. Help them. Use your words to be an encourager and not a tear down. Um, okay. Okay, the normal, the normal, we, no, normal people do, normal thing, we abandon friendships when mistakes are made. But better than normal, forgives. Can you forgive people? Can you forgive and forget and move on? Sometimes that's a challenge for some people. Normal allows insignificant issues to create frustration. But better than normal is patient. Are you a patient person? Can you, can you work through things? Um... Temptation, normal gives in to temptation, but better than normal chooses to, to uh, be pure and have purity. Normal argues when there are differences, but better than normal builds bridges or tries to work things out. Okay, all right. Okay. Let's see what some scriptures are here. All right. Romans 12, verse 13 through 18. This is a good one. Distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no one, to no man, evil for evil. Pro provide things honest in the sight of all men. Okay. In 1 Corinthians six eighteen, it says, If it possible, as much as what lies within you, live peacefully with all men. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man uh, doeth without is without the body, but is he that commits fornications against his own body. So do what you can to be good to all people, all right? Okay. Ephesians 4.32 says this, and be, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgive one another, even as God for, for Christ's sake has forgiven you. All right. So how can we change things and be a better Better than we were, better than we can be, or better, better than the normal we've already lived our life. My life hasn't changed a whole lot with the, with the virus, but I can see how I can change things and make myself better and be a better person. 
So uh, those are the things that we want to do. We want to be better in every other area that we can be better in. Be sensitive to, to God's heart, God's will. Spend time in His Word. Use it to, to uh, meditate, evangelize, be an encourager. You know, be an, you know, being an evangelist doesn't mean that you have to go set up a tent and have a big meeting and all that kind of stuff. Evangelizing is basically every day that you live, you can be a witness. You can be, a, you can be that person that does that. So we want to encourage you tonight just to be, to be that. And uh, let God move on your behalf. And uh, continue to be sensitive to His Word and His plan and His will. Um, make sure that um, you know that the last days are coming. It's very obvious that we're living in the last days. Um, there's a lot of, lot of wickedness out there. A lot of hard times for people. A lot of challenging times. But be that person that's better and, and can, and can make things, adjust the things that are around us to make, to make them better by being who God wants you to be. Amen? All right. Um, so, I guess we'll do... Uh, well, let's just pray. Father God, we just thank you for tonight. And Lord, help us to be all that you want us to be. Help us to be that person that... that is striving to love you and be with you and, and spend time with you. Lord, help us to do all that we can to those around us. Help us to be that light in the darkness. Help us to um, go into all the world and preach the gospel and make disciples. Help us to be all you want us to be. Help us to be that person. Lord, that we can be better than through this situation, better, better and stronger in all that you want us to do. We thank you for those things. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, I just want to encourage you, if you want to, uh, we'll just talk about offering here for a few seconds. You can, the, the interesting thing about when church shuts down, it happens that a lot of people don't give. And I would just encourage you to, to make sure that you're tithing your offering and all those things that are going on because the church still functions. It's still, the church is still going on. And uh, we're, we're still ministering to people. I know Pastor John has been really been encouraged by the offerings that have been coming in because just things are just getting taken care of. Things are getting taken care of. God is moving. God is encouraging people. God is working through people. And uh, for God to operate in the earth system, He has to work through people. He works through us. And, uh, and I've said it many times that uh, you know the, the missionary never has lack of vision. He just normally has lack of finances. So for God to work and God to operate through, the, through, this, uh, through this system, through this earth system, He uses us. He uses people. And uh, so I want to encourage you to just be, continue to be a part of all that God wants you to be a part of. Not only be in a church, you know, if, you know, if, if you're in a situation, you know, health-wise or whatever, you can't come to church because of the virus, things like that. But still participate. Still be, you know, praying for the church, praying for us, praying for... Um, all the things that are going on, um, you know, and be a, be a part of that and be an encouragement with that. And just continue to give your offering and, and find a way to do it. You know, on, you can do it online. You can do it on Facebook. Um, there's several different ways you can do it right there. And, and it's not hard. Just, you know, I'm sure we've all bought stuff online through Amazon or whatever, the, wherever you might buy different things. But uh, so I just want to encourage you to be a part of that and, and let... Uh, um, God show you what to do and how to how to be a part of that. Amen. So I uh, want to encourage you to uh, so just go ahead and take care of those things that way. And then Sunday we'll have regular service on Sunday. Um, and again, we're just we're the protocol is going to change a little bit in the sanctuary. We're not going to tape the tape the chairs off and things like that. But we're just going to ask you to be wise and and come in with a sanitize yourself when you, with the hand sanitizer and things like that when you come in and there's a mask there and just do the, just do the simplest things we can do to, to help be safe for everyone else amen alright so uh, I got a few prayer requests here that Pastor John gave me before the service started so uh, take care of those I don't know if there's anything else going on there with that, if anybody, I, I don't know if I can find it. I don't want to. 
delay that. So, uh, okay. Well, I'll just take care of these things that we got right here, and and uh, we'll go with that. If you have any other needs, Pastor John's available. You know, he just probably can't see you, but he can definitely talk to you on the phone or um, however like that if you need to. And uh, so if you need him, just give him a call and, and he'll talk to you that way. So uh, I've got a few things here on this um, that Pastor John g- gave me, like I said. And we'll just pray for these things. And if anything else comes up, we'll just go with that. All right, Father God, we just thank you for tonight. And Lord, we just thank you that you continue to, to be Lord over all these situations. Lord, we thank you that you're in charge, you're in control. And Lord, as we... As we are sensitive to your heart and sensitive to your plan. Lord, help us to understand and do the things that we need to do. Lord, as we lift these things up, we just ask that you bring them to pass. And we just thank you, Father, for health and for healing for these people on this list. Lord, we thank you for Vicki Peterson that, that uh, we curse that pneumonia at the roots and we cause, her, cause those lungs to be normal, that she can breathe normal, and that she can have victory in her life. We thank you, Father, that she has... Um, peace with that Lord and thank you that she's in the word and she can see the scriptures that talk about by Jesus stripes she's healed Lord we thank you that um, in Isaiah that talks about Jesus um, prophesying that Jesus was going to die on the cross and, and by his stripes that we're going to be healed and in, in the New Testament it talks about it several different places about being healed and whole and we just thank you for that we thank you for, for Vicki that she's healed and she's whole Lord we thank you for Sean Newell and family Lord for comfort for them for his for you know, for the family f- from his passing, Lord, that um, they can have comfort, they can have peace, and Lord, they can find security in you and comfort in you. Lord, and they can just talk to you and help you. And Lord, we just ask for labors across their path to encourage them. And again, we, we also pay for uh, John Tyler, that he can be comforted with that. Lord, that your word is, is real and it works. And we just ask that, Lord, that you just comfort all those people in that situation and give them peace in their heart. And, Lord, they can find, find comfort there, Lord. Again, we pay, lift up Donald Ty, Tyler to you, Lord, that his medicine will come in like it's supposed to, that he can get on the road to recovery there. And, we, Lord, we thank you that he, too, is, is healed and whole by Jesus' stripes that you paid for. Lord, that um, that thing, that virus is cursed at the roots and that he has victory, that he has clarity in his heart and in and his body is healed and whole, Lord. We just thank you for all those things, Lord. We just continue to thank you that all the members of the Living Faith Fellowship and, and those who surround us and the family members here are healed and whole. And Lord, give us wisdom, give us protection, give us insight so we know how to do those things that we need to do. And Lord, we just thank you for all those things. Thank you for all those things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, I don't know... Uh, Anything else here? Anybody else have anything? So uh, we just uh, thank you for participating. If you made it through, we just thank you for that. And, and uh, um, just want to encourage you to, to be a part of what's going on. Be sensitive to God's plan and purpose and watch out for yourself. And uh, do what you need to do. You can be better than normal. We don't have to, st- we don't have to stick to the, what the world's plan is. The world's plan is for failure. And for us to just get locked up and not, not do anything. But uh, God has a plan. He doesn't want us to be down and out. He wants us to be involved in what he's doing. Amen. So get a plan. Ask God what he wants you to do. And just be a part of that. Amen. All right. There we go.